feeling of just knowing a game is right for you when you first lay eyes on it is such a great feeling. The thing that happens is you, you start to feel the excitement just build up. I'm thinking about it all the time, even in my sleep. Incluso a veces por una misma comunidad. Te dejas de enamorar bastantísimo. I play video games because I love stories. Experiencing worlds that you can't experience as yourself. I guess video games allow me to be what I can't. It's fiction, but it's not. And come home, log onto your PC, and disappear into a different world. I am a part of something bigger, a part of something beautiful. As an autistic person, Video games gave me a place where I could be in a world that made sense to me. I will tell you that all of my family play video games. Me and my brothers, we would share the computer one hour at a time. I'm really enjoying playing video games with my dad. My children. My little sister. That connection between video games allowing us to converse with each other added a lot to our relationship. Games like the World of Warcraft let me meet people that I probably never would have. I can honestly say I, I met some of my best friends through playing games. We have this connection that allows us to share our joys, to share our achievements, to share our growth together. Every time I'm able to achieve something, I'm able to make myself proud. Killing heroic Blackhand back in Warlords of Draenor was one of my favorite memories. I managed to find that one hidden pylon with my one mutilisk. We beat hardcore Inferno Diablo. I was able to hit gold in competitive in Overwatch. I had someone say, oh, I can't lose to a girl. Uh, and I beat that guy. So I was able to slay this warlock as a little gnome holy priest, freaking out and screaming the whole time. The adrenaline through my body was going crazy. Pela caminhada tem sido tão prazerosa. E pela conquista ter vindo. A gente se sentiu muito... Caramba, a gente conseguiu algo incrível aqui, hein? I killed the Lich King! I killed the Lich King! Então, eu tô agora, eu tô sentado. Os homens de trabalho, inclusive os homens de trabalho, eles estão chorando. Há muitos anos atrás, eu estava fazendo uma quest em Terracar Forest. E uma pequena mulher me disse, me ajudou a fazer um risco para o dia. Nós já estamos casados há mais de uma década. Those video games filled a void. They filled the friendships that I didn't have. There isn't a huge LGBTQIA plus community in my city. So when I was able to play a video game, I was able to start talking with people who didn't really care that I was a gay male. But video games were my escape. When I was a teenager, my dad was diagnosed with ALS. And I looked to video games as a way to escape from that sort of reality. Everything happens for a reason, and I'm just glad video games were there for me. I'll never stop playing video games. There's no way. <laughs> I imagine myself one day being an 80-year-old grandpa gamer. Playing video games has shaped me. I don't think I would be who I am today. My passion, my interest, my excitement, they belong. Video games opened for me the world. And because of that, I'm forever thankful. And I can't wait to see what the next generation holds. Welcome to BlizzCon Line, a celebration of 30 years of Blizzard communities and 30 years of Blizzard games. 30 years is so many years, and last year maybe felt like one of the longest of all. But throughout the years of Blizzard Entertainment, from 1991 to today, many of us can associate certain games with milestones in our lives. Maybe you were a little kid the first time you played the Lost Vikings. Or in high school, when you first played a Diablo game. Or maybe you met your partner while you were playing World of Warcraft. That's the awesome thing about video games. They give us experiences that are relevant to the times in our lives and experiences 
that we carry forward with us. Games are here for us during good times, and they're here for us even when we feel alone or maybe uncertain. Games are coming home, familiar, comfortable, with a connection and a sense of belonging. And while many of us spent most of 2020 in our actual real life homes, games became even more of a place to get away, to be free from outside concerns, even if just for a little while. So this is pretty weird. Usually when we start BlizzCon, the opening call is to my favorite Warcraft faction, the Alliance or my favorite faction, the Horde. I, I get confused. Usually, I'd be speaking to 40,000 of you in person at the Anaheim Convention Center and millions of you around the world. And usually, that would be a perfect way to celebrate. But nothing about the last year has been usual. The pandemic has been hard on everyone and for many different reasons. But if there's one thing that the last year has taught us, it's that being apart physically doesn't stop us from moving forward. It doesn't stop us from connecting with our player friends around the world, diving in as warriors and heroes, and checking on each other as humans. It doesn't stop us from sharing our latest epic gaming story celebrating those of others. Games continue to unite us. Now, to be honest, I wasn't sure how well Blizzard could work from home. There are thousands of people all needing to work together in creating our universes, games, and experiences. Never has it felt more true that it takes a Blizzard to make a Blizzard game. And in 2020, it became clear that the magic of creating at Blizzard isn't just tied to a physical location. It's tied to the people who work here. And I continue to be so proud of each and every one of them. Thank you, Blizzard. We create these games and pour all of our energy and heart into them. But it is you, the Blizzard community, that brings them to life. And that's why BlizzCon Line is a celebration of you. The guild leaders, healers, DPS, tanks, innkeepers, Zerg, Terran, Protoss, Blackwatch, Shimada, the heroes of Sanctuary and of the Storm. These next few days are for you, our Blizzard community. For World of Warcraft, we'll be showing you what's next for both Shadowlands and Classic. I'm sure you're all burning in anticipation for that one. Hearthstone is getting back to its roots in a major way. We can't wait to show you how. We also have news for our Diablo community. Some of you were able to dip your toes into the depths of hell in the Diablo Immortal Technical Alpha. I personally, I really enjoyed seeing players embrace the multiplayer aspect of meeting in town. We can't wait for more of you to get your hands on it. So, it's only the beginning of the year and already there is so much to look forward to, even though we can't yet be together in person. The Overwatch League will be kicking things off in spring and we'll be watching closely to see if the San Francisco Shock can continue their championship run. World of Warcraft Esports is back with the Arena World Championship and Mythic Dungeon International already in full swing in Shadowlands. StarCraft II and Warcraft III Esports are going strong with our friends at the ESL Pro Tour. And qualifiers are already underway for the first online stop of the 2021 Hearthstone Masters Tour, with the first event taking place next month. But 
before we get too far ahead, let's take a look one last time to when times were a little simpler. In the early 1990s, the internet was a baby. CD sales had finally eclipsed cassette tapes. A uh, cassette tape, it's a rectangle piece of plastic, and there's a tape inside, and music would get recorded on, and sometimes you needed a pencil to wind it and make it tight. It, I know, it sounds crazy. We were all playing video games on Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, DOS, or Mac PCs. I personally was a master of config sys and auto exec bat. So many simple things in simple times. If only we could relive them. The stage is set. The green flag drops. Let the carnage begin. Holy Toledo! What a collection! Now we're talking! What a play! Blizzard Arcade Collection, featuring the Lost Vikings, Rock and Roll Racing, and Blackthorn. These are ports of the games just as you remember them, allowing you to relive the original experience of all three titles in 13 different languages, with a couple of quality of life upgrades. As an example, we include very modern, cutting edge functionality that wasn't available in the early 90s both saving and loading of games. And for those of you who purchased any Blizzard Digital Anniversary Bundle via Battle.net, you'll automatically receive the Blizzard Arcade Collection on PC today. Now, you ready to hear about some other video games? Let's hear what's next for World of Warcraft. Thanks for joining us today. No matter where you are, World of Warcraft unites us all. Whether you're exploring the Shadowlands, classic Azeroth, or another part of the Blizzard universe, I'm glad you could make it, because we've got a lot of good stuff to show you. But first, let's start with some Covenant pride. Kyrian, take flight. Nightbay, let the hunt begin. Necrologues to war! Vinthe, let's party. The world has thrown a lot at us since the last BlizzCon, and the thing that's really kept everyone going on the WoW team has been connecting with all of you. The bonds we forge with our guilds and family and friends in WoW are powerful and real. As WoW enters its 16th year and Blizzard celebrates its 30th anniversary, we're so grateful to have the most dedicated and friendly communities in gaming. Let's recap the events in Azeroth. In WoW Classic, we fought an endless battle for South Shore and Tauren Mill. We banded together to open the gates of Ankaraj and joined forces to take down Kel'Thuzad in his floating citadel of Naxxramas. In Shadowlands, we helped our covenant recover from the anima drought brought on by Sire Denathrius, master of the Vinthyr and traitor to the Pantheon of Death. 
We survived the halls of Torghast and crafted legendary gear in our efforts to expel Denathrius from his castle lair. But innocent souls are still wrongfully being sent to the Maw. They face an eternity of torment, and heroes like Anduin remain chained in its depths. The Jailer continues to grow in power. He's preparing to break free from the Maw and complete his plan to unmake the entire Warcraft universe. And Sylvanas, you may be wondering what she's been up to all this time. Today, we're excited to unveil our first major content update for Shadowlands, Chains of Domination. Look around you! What makes you believe you're not just a weapon to achieve his end? Enough! Join our cause, or be made to serve. Right now, you hold all the power. Make your choice, Sylvanas Windrunner. Despite all our efforts, the Maw continues to grow. What if Denathrius' treachery is irreparable? The Primus is lost, and Bastion cannot save the Shadowlands alone. None of this should have happened. Perhaps the Winter Queen could... My Archon, a living soul, seeks an audience. A mortal. A king. By all our measures, one who has spent his life striving for justice. One who would give anything to serve his people. One whose heart is true. Very well. He may approach. Step forward. My Ascended have spoken of you. The King held captive in the Maw. That prison could not hold me forever. Why have you come to Bastion? You have a key that I need. You will release this soul from your grasp. No. He is bound to me, just as you would sought to bind your own brother. so intense. I know you probably have a lot of questions about what you just saw and what it means for the next stage of your Shadowlands journey. Later today, my teammates Ian and Jeremy will be telling you more about Chains of Domination in our Shadowlands update. Please check out the World of Warcraft channel to find out more. Next, I'm excited to share our upcoming World of Warcraft charity pet program. 
We've heard a lot from our community about how much they love these pets and the opportunity to give to a good cause, along with ideas to make the program even better. So during this upcoming campaign, you'll be able to donate whatever amount you wish to directly support our chosen charity. Once donations reach our goal, everyone playing World of Warcraft will get a pet for their collection as a thank you, whether you were able to contribute personally or not. And to make this a fun challenge, if we reach a stretch goal, everyone gets a second pet too. And here they are. The first pet is bananas, literally. He was originally available to a select few back in Burning Crusade era, so we're excited to give everyone a chance to adopt him. And if we reach our stretch goal, you'll also get Daisy the Sloth. She's an all-new pet who'll hang around your neck when you need a hug. Your donations during this campaign will go to support the medical humanitarian organization Doctors Without Borders, also known by their French name, Médecins Sans Frontières, or MSF. They're an amazing group doing important work around the world. We're grateful to have such a generous community, and we hope you'll help support this worthy cause. We'll be sharing the details about the Charity Pet Program on the World of Warcraft website soon. So we've talked quite a bit about Shadowlands. Classic players, now it's your turn. It's my pleasure to hand off to my teammate, Holly Longdale. She's a longtime WoW player, a veteran MMO developer, and she's gonna tell us what's in store for WoW Classic. First, I'd like to thank all of you who have ever been part of the WoW community over the years. You know, online worlds like WoW have been a huge part of our lives for decades now. As a dedicated MMO fan and a developer myself, I remember hearing that Blizzard was going to be making their own MMO. And I thought, well, I guess I'll check out that beta. And sure, we all call the game WoW, but really, WoW. I could not believe I got bit by the MMO bug again. I was so excited to be able to make a night elf hunter and be like that famous dark elf ranger from the books that I loved. I have to tell you, Azeroth was, and still is, a place I love to live. Since last year, I've had the great honor to work alongside the WoW Classic team to bring these nostalgic experiences back to life for longtime fans and a whole new generation of players. As a fan myself, I've had so much fun in WoW. From the simple things like drive-by buffing or making friends on that long haul from Teldrassil to Ironforge, all the way to the absolutely staggering, like when I jumped blindly through the dark portal and was running through Hellfire Peninsula, heard this terrifying noise and then saw the Fell Reaver, biggest roamer I had ever seen, and I was very glad I had feigned death in that moment. And that's the thing about WoW. These stories and experiences we all share keep us coming back time after time. With that said, I'm super excited to be able to share with you where our adventures are taking us next.
has brought you to this end. Take my blood and choke on it. Death to the outsiders. I'll turn your world upside down. You are not prepared. back so many memories, right? Like exploring the fungal forests of Zangar Marsh, or being awestruck at the chaotic magic alive in Netherstorm, the Draenei in Exodar, the Blood Elves in Silvermoon. I love playing them both. Do you choose to enlist the Aldor or the Scryers in your quest to fight the Legion? And of course, we can't forget gathering all your friends to fight Illidan at the top of the Black Temple. I can't wait to relive it all with you. Since the team first set out on their own quest to bring the original WoW back to life, we have learned a ton about what players are expecting from this kind of experience. We've also learned when to keep things just as they were and where we all might be open to some changes. We're bringing all these lessons into Burning Crusade Classic with our primary goal to bring back the same feeling you had when you faced the Fell Reaver for the first time, or when you were digging through piles of Fellhound poop. Of course, we can't get this right without you, our incredible community. Soon, you'll be able to revisit Outland yourself when beta starts and tell us what you think. Later, all WoW Classic players are going to be presented with a meaningful choice for each one of your beloved characters. Do you want to move on into Burning Crusade Classic? Or do you want to stay in the original classic era forever? Whatever you decide, you can do it all with your one WoW subscription. Now, I know I've thrown a lot at you, but don't worry. We'll be getting into the details in our panel later today. So stick with us. We'll make sure you are prepared. And now, we're going to hear what's coming up in Hearthstone. Greetings. We're truly excited to share with you everything that's coming to Hearthstone this year. But first, let's take a quick look back at the year of the Phoenix. We added our first new class, the Demon Hunter, and ventured into the ruthless Outlands. Then we went to Skullman's Academy and got to explore dual class cards and their powerful synergies. And with our third expansion of the year, we brought you Hearthstone's biggest update ever, alongside the menacing old gods in Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. We launched a brand new game mode, Duels, that saw more than 10 million matches on its first day. We also introduced our long-awaited achievement system and made a significant overhaul to the rewards and progression within the game. Now, it's time to say farewell to the Year of the Phoenix and see what's in store for Hearthstone this year. Welcome to the Year of the Griffin. Over the last couple of years, we've made big changes to Hearthstone. Throughout the Year of the Griffin, we want to keep delivering fun, new experiences and make sure that the tens of millions of you playing Hearthstone are always excited to log in. First up, we'll be giving the standard format its biggest shakeup ever with the launch of the core set later this year. The core set replaces the old basic and classic sets with a collection of 235 cards made up of some of the best from throughout the years, as well as 29 awesome brand new cards. And the best thing about the core set is that it's entirely free. So there's never been a better time to get into Hearthstone. Here are three of Hearthstone's legendary dragons, reimagined to feel more up to date and competitive for modern day Hearthstone. Ysera the Dreamer. You'll finally receive her full arsenal of dream cards right away. She's a nightmare 
for your opponents. Malagos the Spellweaver. He'll fill your hand with spells and is a powerful late game play, worthy of the aspect of magic. And finally, everyone's favorite black dragon, Deathwing. He's still as destructive as ever, but timed correctly, he won't leave you empty handed. We'll also be launching a brand new format, Classic, where you can play Hearthstone as it was when it first launched. The Classic format will be fully supported, complete with ranks and rewards using Hearthstone's original set of cards. So, if you want to relive the old school experience, then Classic is the place for you. With Classic revisiting the past, now let's take a look to the future and explore the first expansion of the year of the Griffin. For a hero of the Horde, all roads lead to the crossroads. You have come for adventure, but the Barons wants to break you. Your axe must be shot. Your wits must be keen, and your heart must be mighty. That's right, we're headed to one of Warcraft's most iconic locales, the Barrens, and we'll come face to face with the heroes that inhabit it, starting with one of the Horde's most iconic and well-known characters, a fierce loyalist, one-time warchief that embodies the honor, loyalty, and spirituality of the Horde, Shadowhunter Vol'jin. Shadowhunter Vol'jin is a neutral legendary that allows you to either bolster your own board or weaken that of your opponents. And to celebrate the announcement of Forged in the Barrens, this card is available for free for everyone later today. So log into Hearthstone and claim your free copy of Shadowhunter Vol'jin. And as a bonus, we're also giving away the brand new 30 years of Blizzard card back. Next, we have another hero of the Horde who is making his first appearance in Hearthstone. The legendary blade master, Samuro, featuring the new keyword, Frenzy. Frenzy activates the first time a minion takes damage and survives. In Samuro's case, this can be used to clear your opponent's board. Heroes of the Horde, like Samuro, are famous for their combat prowess, but others, like Thrall, are known for their powerful elemental magic. Take a look at this new shaman spell, Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning is a spell in a new cycle of cards that rank up and become more powerful when you have five and 10 mana, ensuring that they're always useful at every stage in the game. You'll also notice that they're categorized as nature spells. With Forged in the Barrens, will be permanently introducing spell schools across the entire game, which enables a whole host of exciting new strategies. And don't worry, members of the Alliance will be featuring some of your most beloved heroes and locales later this year. But what I love most about the Warcraft universe is its amazing characters. And our final announcement is our most ambitious addition to Hearthstone yet. It introduces a brand new way to play with your favorite heroes. Hearthstone Mercenaries. Mercenaries features strategic RPG gameplay where you build teams consisting of some of the most iconic heroes and villains from the Warcraft universe, including 
timeless characters like the infamous Sylvanas Windrunner. And Ragnaros, the elemental lord of fire. You can also expect to see some of Hearthstone's fan favorites, like the unstoppable Devil Sword, King Crush, and the ever-growing Gruul the Dragon Slayer. You'll lead them in battle through highly replayable roguelike missions, where the map is randomly generated every time you play, and each node represents a unique challenge for your team's take on. Your heroes gain levels, new abilities, equipment, and can even evolve into more powerful versions of themselves. We're thrilled to finally show you Hearthstone Mercenaries. It is scheduled to launch later this year, and we'll have more to share with you down the road. Everything you've seen today is just a taste of what's coming in the Year of the Griffin. So don't forget to tune in to our Deep Dive panel after the opening ceremony, where we'll share more details on the core set, the new classic format, Forged in the Barrens, and our plans for Battlegrounds and Duels, as well as our upcoming single-player content. I want to thank the team for their amazing work. And on behalf of all of us at Hearthstone, we want to thank the many millions of you who play our game. Your dedication and support is what drives us to make awesome updates and pursue ambitious and fun ideas. We can't wait to kick off the Year of the Griffin with all of you, and we hope to see you in the game soon. Next up, you'll get an update on all things Diablo. Hey everyone, thank you very much for joining us. I am so excited to kick off the Diablo segment of our show, and I am honored to be here on behalf of all of our Diablo teams to share the news and updates we have in store for you today. We've got a lot of Diablo to cover, and I hope you'll agree with me that it's a great time to be a member of this community. All right, let's kick things off with Diablo 4. We first shared our game with you during BlizzCon of 2019, and we've been truly humbled by your response. We've kept in touch through quarterly updates and sincerely appreciate the thoughts and valuable feedback you've provided as we unveil more and more of the game and share in its development. After all, Diablo belongs to you as much as it belongs to us. Most recently, we teased an update to our campfire screen and savvy fans, of course, understood that we meant more than just the character lighting and fire visual effects. That's right. Today, we're happy to announce a brave new soul joining the Barbarian, the Sorcerer, and the Druid on this dangerous journey back to Sanctuary. A class is one of the most exciting things you can announce in a Diablo game. This one is especially exciting to me as it's a re-envisioning of one of the first classes to ever appear in the series. Let's have a look. Your prayers do not fall on deaf ears. Just know they are being heard. There is justice within the light, but you have to be patient. Pray with me. May Akarat guide and protect me. May Akarat guide and protect me. May he shepherd my soul. May he shepherd my soul. And grant it mercy. And grant it mercy. What are you doing here? This is not the time. But this is confession. And I have sinned. I was a thief who stole from those more fortunate. I strayed from your light and found my trade in the shadows. They call it murder. I say, job well done. Stop. Stop. Enough. I am a thief, a heretic. 
heretic. A murderer, father. Will Akira save me? <laughs> you mock our light. But those monsters were a scourge upon my flock. And you... Well, you were the answer to their prayers. Then we are settled. And you owe me. The name you see is... Thank the heavens for you. Heavens? I assure you, Father. The heavens didn't send me. The sound of that ear getting pierced by the hook is so brutal. I feel like it's gonna haunt me for a long time. I've been a huge fan of the Rogue ever since the original Diablo. Even seeing them come back as NPCs and mercenaries in Diablo II's Rogue encampment served as a great bridge between the games. With the setting of Diablo IV being a larger world than we've ever played in before, we're excited to show you not just what the successors to the original rogues in the series have been up to since the fall of their order, but also what some of the other rogues in the world of Sanctuary might look like. The mantra for Diablo IV has been customization first, and the rogue takes this to a whole new level. From the beginning, the rogue has been an incredibly flexible class, able to adapt to any situation. Our goal is to let you create the kind of rogue that you want to play. Whether it's an unrivaled archer modeled after the original sisterhood, or a cloak and dagger rogue from the darkest alleys of Chaldeum, in Diablo 4, you will have the freedom to create the rogue that you imagine by customizing the looks, the background, and the playstyle of your character. Please stick around for our segment later today where I'll be joined by other members of the Diablo 4 team to share a closer look at the Rogue class, as well as some of the open world gameplay that we're bringing to the game. Spoilers, those severed ears are not just for show. But Diablo 4 is not the only Diablo game we're talking about today. If you're looking for an authentic Diablo experience on mobile, we've got you covered. Diablo Immortal has everything you'd expect from a triple-A action RPG. From the visceral combat and epic loot to an all-new story, bridging the gap between the events of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. Later today, you can join the Immortal team, where they'll talk about some of the things they've learned from their recent alpha test and what's next for the game. But that's still not all. We have one last bit of very exciting Diablo news to cover. When you hear us talk about the classes, the items, or the stories of the early Diablo games, you may have picked up on the absolute reverent tone we reserve for that golden era of Diablo. Maybe you share that love of the classics, and just hearing us talk about them makes you want to take on Mephisto or Bale one more time. Or maybe even for the first time, 
After all, some of our favorite moments happened a long time ago and not just in sanctuary years. If so, we have a special surprise for you today. Let's check it out. After more than 20 years, the Dark Wanderer has returned. And once again, he travels east, always east. Diablo 2 is a landmark game for Blizzard. Diablo 2 Resurrected is a full HD remaster of both the original game and the expansion, Lord of Destruction. It takes the 2D sprite-based classic that we love and brings it into the present in 3D, utilizing up-to-date graphical rendering and lighting technologies. It also includes modernizing all 27 minutes of cinematics, recreated shot for shot with the explicit intention of preserving both the look and the pacing of the original movies. Blizzard has a long history of games that we're proud of. And when we think about Diablo II, we think about it as a definitive pillar in our foundation. Now, it's funny to think that some of you weren't even born when D2 was released, which makes it all the more important that we deliver an authentic experience wherever you play. We want everyone to relive their memories or experience the game for the very first time on their platform of choice. And so we're excited to bring Diablo II Resurrected to PC and console, along with cross-progression. And for those of you who are in love with the original and you just wish it worked more seamlessly on modern computers, you can bring back all of that nostalgia exactly as you remember and enjoy the game in its original 2D form, much like we did with StarCraft Remastered, obviously. There's a lot to talk about. Later today, Diablo speedrunner Mr. Llama will host a roundtable with members of the development team on the dedicated Diablo channel. If you are a Diablo 2 fan, I encourage you to take a look. So, from Diablo 2 Resurrected, to Burning Crusade Classic, to the Blizzard Arcade Collection, it's a whole lot of looking back. And while we have teams dedicated to bringing these timeless experiences into your hands, it's actually a very small percentage of our developers working on these projects. Far more people are working on the future of Blizzard. And in addition to what we'll be talking about during the show, we can't wait to tell you even more about our plans over the course of this year and beyond. 
If you had asked us 30 years ago what gaming would look like today, none of us could have predicted the current Blizzard lineup of games. The advances in technology are one thing, but it's really what those advances have enabled that's even more incredible. If you think about the people who play games and the communities that have grown up around them, the way people can connect instantly, no matter where they are in the world, the way people are increasingly able to express their identity and celebrate who they are through their favorite games, communities, and platforms. The explosion of things like streaming, cosplay, and esports. It would have been hard to imagine any of that 30 years ago. And at Blizzard, that is what excites us about the next 30 years. There is so much that we're working on. And some of it you already know about. The rest, we look forward to talking to you about it when the time is right. Just like the real world, the worlds of Warcraft, Diablo, Starcraft, Heroes of the Storm, Overwatch, and Hearthstone are diverse, expansive, and full of potential. We are not only iterating on the experiences that you've come to expect from us. We're also exploring different ways to express our worlds and welcome more players from more places into them. And we aspire to continue to lead on priorities like accessibility and toxicity control and to continue supporting causes that have a positive impact on the real world. We wanna to continue to bring those same feelings of joy and achievement that we all felt when we first defeated the Lich King or beat Diablo on hardcore mode. Because when we gig out on those experiences with others, we can't help but see the similarities between us and feel what's possible when we play together. Of course, there are new Blizzard worlds that we haven't visited quite yet. And when we do finally unveil those games and experiences, our hope is that you will see in them what we do, that no matter who you are or where you're from, they are spaces where you can create new stories, forge new friendships, and make memories worthy of lasting a lifetime. And through it all, our mission statement of being dedicated to creating the most epic entertainment experiences ever, along with our core values, led by Gameplay First, will continue to guide our way. So on behalf of everyone at Blizzard, thank you for being on this journey. For me personally, it is the honor of my professional life to serve you, and the honor of all of us at Blizzard to be the caretakers of the worlds that you play in. We are so excited for what's to come this year, next year, and the next 30 years. Now, what's coming next for the show? Well, it depends on where you watch. For those of you looking for an update on Overwatch, check out the behind the scenes look into the development of Overwatch 2 over on their dedicated channel right after the conclusion of opening ceremonies. There, you'll hear about Overwatch 2, new content, new features, including new maps, hero missions, talent trees, and more of what we think will make Overwatch 2 a unique gameplay experience. For World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Hearthstone, you'll get a closer look on their respective channels. And on the dedicated strategy channel, some StarCraft legends will be going head-to-head -head in epic competition. Once again, welcome to BlizzCon Live. Be good to one another. Welcome home.